you you bring the characters to life really jordan dickerson how are you oh, i'm doing great how about you graham i'm going good um now i'm here just outside london well about 35 miles north of london place called hitchin in hertfordshire and you're in florida yes tampa florida tampa florida i've not been oh yes i have been to tampa i think i went to bush gardens is that in tampa that's in tampa yeah i've been to bush gardens i've not re really been to tampa but I, it was many many you went years to bush gardens and then you immediately left you didn't want to <laughs> hang around anymore. no i was touring around um i was living in new zealand at the time and my parents were in britain and i came back to visit them and I stopped off in Florida and two of my friends from Britain flew out and we rented a car and just drove around Florida and Bush Gardens was one of the places we went. Um, of course we went, we went all the touristy things. We did Orlando and we went to, you know, Cape Canaveral and, you know, we just did all the things Florida tourists do. We went on an airboat in the Everglades and we had a lot of fun. Oh yeah, you packed all the boxes of all the <laughs> Yeah, packed. that's what we, we went right down the Keys too. We went all the way down to Key West. And uh yeah, we it, it was I can't remember it was a week or two weeks. It must have been two weeks we did so much. But yeah, um all what I remember about it was we decided because we were moving around a lot that we would do most of the driving at night so that we could check it or when it was dark, so that we could mm -hmm. check into the next motel at night go to sleep and then wake up the next morning and we're in Miami or wherever we were that day. And then at the end of the day, then we'd hit the road again. And like, you know, I used to drink back then and we were drinking a lot of, I mean, I was like, what was it? 21? No, I wasn't that old. I think I was, I think I was 20. Anyway, uh, we driving around and we're drinking a lot of beer, not the driver, but me and this other guy were drinking a lot of beer. So we'd go, we, you know, now and again, you'd need to have a pee. And we would just, you know, pull over and just have a pee on the side of the road. And we didn't find out till much later that those ditches on the side of those roads, there's alligators in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you right, you peed right over them. So. <laughs> if we'd have known that, it would have been a whole different system. Yeah, we found out towards the end that that was going on. So did you grow up in Tampa? Uh, yeah, for the most part. Um, I was actually born in New Jersey. Wow. And yeah, then I moved to Tampa when I was 11. So. What happens if your parents get really old? Because Jerry Seinfeld said, it's, it, isn't it the law that people have to retire to Florida? You know, from <laughs> like New Jersey, like from that way, you know? From well, uh, yeah, it seems that way because like everyone, uh, like a bunch of people who like used to live in New Jersey, they have mostly relocated to, uh, to Florida. So that does happen a lot. But no, actually, um, my dad got laid off uh and his job in new jersey but then they had the same job available in florida so he just immediately took that job and just came right down but i stayed in new jersey because my parents were divorced but then i came to live with my dad and that's how i ended up here and what was the job your dad did uh that's a good question i asked him several times when i was younger and i forgot every single time so <laughs> so you still don't know uh, no, but I'm sure he'll see this and then he'll, he'll probably tell me. <laughs> You'll be in big trouble. I've just got you in a lot of trouble, Jordan. So was it like a white collar or was it a blue collar job? Do you even know that much? Uh, I'm going to say white collar, but yeah. yeah. Right. So, so as a kid, what kind of stuff were you reading? Uh, nothing. Yeah. I didn't you weren't read a, a reader. No, not at all. I, uh, I didn't, I didn't read a single book. The only thing I read as a kid was, uh, if you could even consider it reading, was uh, video game magazines. But that was, yeah, that was about it. I didn't, I didn't read any books. I watched movies. I watched a lot of movies. Yeah, and there's a lot of that in a tremendous a lot. There's a lot of what feels like movie imagery. Um, would that would that be fair to say that that it, it's it's influenced more by movies? than by books you've read oh absolutely because uh like books really didn't get me into writing which might sound kind of weird but movies got me into writing yeah i actually originally didn't want to write a book i wanted to write a screenplay but the way i thought about it was oh if i write a screenplay you know the chances of it getting made into a movie are very slim so 
I would probably have to like make it myself. But if I were to make it myself, that would take a lot of time and effort and money. So, and so to prove to myself that I would like be committed to it, I should start off by writing a book. Right. But if I'm going to write a book, well, I haven't written anything like that big before. So I should probably start off small and write short stories. Right. So I'll write short stories and then I'll get enough short stories to make a book. And then once I'm done with the book, I would have proven to myself that I'm committed enough to writing and then I'll go on to a screenplay. But you have done a screenplay, haven't you? Yes, yes, I have. And what was that? Uh, I mean, I haven't like made it yet or sold it or anything, but um, it's called Hydra Fires. And I don't know if you remember this, but throughout my book, I make references to the movie Hydra Fires. So, yeah. Now it all makes sense. Now it all makes sense. So how many books have you done? Uh, this is my first one. So. Wow, what a privilege for me then to be the narrator of your first one. <laughs> I had no idea. I, mean, I wow. feel like a privileged one, but. Well, I can tell you, it's, you know, since May when I started doing this, I've read 53, I've produced 53 audiobooks. There's no way you could tell this was your first. No way. Oh, well, no way. I will tell you some of the ones I've done. I would suspect maybe, but not yours. No. Um, wow. So when did you start writing? Uh, June 2019. Not that yeah. long ago. Yeah, not that long ago. Um, the way I, I like, so I, I started writing because of movies, but the only reason I got enough confidence to even like start writing and putting stuff out there in the first place was because uh so i'm a software engineer yeah and at this company i used to work for one day they were looking for someone to write an article for uh the company newsletter right and no one wanted to do it because software engineers hate writing <laughs> so i wanted to look good uh and like get my name out there so yeah. i volunteered to do it and i did it and apparently i did a good job because they wanted me to keep doing it. And then they gave me a, like a permanent spot uh, on the newsletter uh, where every month I would, I would write something and they gave me free reign to write whatever I wanted. So uh, like months went by of me doing this and you know, people liked it, whatever. But then this one guy I worked with came up to me and he told me, you know, oh man, uh, I read your last article, it was really good. You should start writing some of your own stuff. And I'm sure he meant like more technical stuff, yeah. but I just completely took that as an excuse to like, oh, I, I can go write whatever I want. So like at that moment, that's when I decided, oh, I'm going to write a screenplay. But then, you know, I told you the thought process that drew me back into, oh, I'll write a book first. Right. And what were the, the articles you were writing in the, in the newsletter then? Uh, it, uh, stuff that had to do with my job um yeah. but it's like uh like it's a government contracting type job um that has to do with technology so uh like i won't get into specifics about it but yeah okay and then that so that was that that you kind of realized hey i can do this and i kind of quite enjoy it was that the the thing that the light that went on yeah yeah so like i'm I'm definitely going to write another book i mean i didn't realize how much i enjoy it actually i've actually already like started on writing another one so yeah yeah that's that goes and is this going to be is the new one going to be a collection of short stories as well no the new one's going to be a novel it is yeah uh -huh. okay so, you so guys... like i like i said um in the book there's references to the movie that my screenplay is going to be. And in the screenplay, like there's references to the book. And this new book that I'm writing is kind of like a sequel to the story that the screenplay is telling, so. Okay, that's interesting to have that running theme because obviously in the book, which is short stories, a lot of the short stories reference the same thing, the zombie attack.
Oh, yeah. I'm glad, did, I'm glad you caught that. Yeah. Did you, when you were putting the book together, did you have that thread running through in your mind or did that come up as you were putting the short stories together? Uh, that, w that was always going to be uh, the purpose um, because I like, like when I watch movies, I like movies that like connect to each other yeah. and like one way or another and like subtle ways not where it's like super obvious like shoving in your face but like little references that if you're paying attention you could catch on so yeah. like you said the zombie attack where they reference the zombie attack and then you actually get to see the zombie attack so, well i didn't realize because the, the, you know one of the stories it wasn't even the first one i think it was, it was about the third one in i'm not sure but it 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 referenced the, the zombie attack and it was something, oh yeah, you know, that's not true or something. And then the reference to the zombie attack came up again and then two or three times. And then when we get to the story and the climax of, of the, and I don't want to give anything away in case anyone hasn't heard the audio book or hasn't read the book yet, because it will spoil it. Um, but you really do take it somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the zombie, the zombie, it's not like it, it's just a reference and it comes about and then there's a thing, but it really goes somewhere. So it was a real thrill for it to all kind of, you know, make sense and all, and all, all come together. You know, it was really, uh, yeah. it was really nice to know but, that, that that was all part of it. Well, and uh, like, I, I guess, because the way I wrote the book, I wanted it to be, because like with, uh, for movies that I like, I like movies that, you know, the more you watch them, the more you get out of them. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the way I want to tell the stories in my book. So like there are a bunch of connections, like there are characters that are like, you know, on the forefront in some stories, but then in other stories are just like in the background, like yeah. doing something. Yeah. And I'll have characters, they won't like always- Like the police be... officer? Yeah. Yes, like yeah. the police officer. <laughs> yeah. And I won't have them always referred to as the same name. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I'll give them like one name and then I'll give them a nickname or then I'll just have a description of them. Yeah. So, and then like certain characters are related. So, yeah. So the title of the book, I yeah. wasn't sure whether it was a tremendous a lot or a tremendous a lot. What is the, what is the official way that you hear it? Uh, the way I hear it is a, a tremendous a lot. A tremendous a lot. And where does that title come from? Uh, <laughs> so there is a, there is this old interview um this old radio interview uh with stanley kubrick right uh, who's one of my favorite filmmakers and it's like this long like two-hour interview uh and like 48 minutes into it i believe um he's talking about all the research he was doing uh before making the movie dr strangelove right and he was talking about like all the stuff he was reading and he was uh, saying how uh, he was reading like a significant amount. And they said, you read a tremendous a lot. But then he like stops and realizes how stupid a tremendous a lot is because it's not grammatically correct. So he's like, oh man, I'm, re I'm really getting fucked up on this. No, you're a tremendous a lot. So like, if you listen to it, it's funny. But uh, yeah. yeah, so that's where I got that from. Uh, because I used that quote in the beginning of the book. That's yeah, I was about to say that explains the quote. Uh, the most terrifying fact about the universe is not that it is hostile, but that it is indifferent. But if we can come to terms with this indifference and accept the challenges of life within the boundaries of death, however mutable man may be able to make them, our existence as a species can have genuine meaning and fulfillment. However vast the darkness, we must supply our own light. Yeah, you, you actually start the book. That's how it sets it up. And I, I read that and I thought, yeah, this is going to be an interesting book. I mean, I'd already done the, the audition, so I had the idea of the vibe of the book. But then yeah. having that as the, as the positioner for you're about to go on a ride here, and you do go on a ride. These stories are... These stories... Um, would, would you say dark is a fair way to explain the, the subject matter in, in these stories? I mean, that's what I keep hearing, so. You do? Uh, <laughs> I'm not surprised. I mean, I, I think some of them, yes, are, are pretty dark, but I think some of them might be kind of hopeful because, you know, like yeah. uh, 
I, the way I see it is, um, you know, you have to put your characters through a lot to see like who they, who they really are. Yeah. And uh, maybe sometimes I put them through a little bit too much. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. It, to me, although it's much, it's much harder edged, I got a feeling of the, the twilight zone from it. Would, would that be fair? Uh, yeah, I you mean, know, because like, it is like a lot of short stories, maybe that, yeah. but they are, they are interesting short stories with twists. Yeah. So I, I like the, I, I really like the Twilight Zone. I've watched Twilight Zone. I also like shows like, uh, Black Mirror. Yes. Um, that, yeah. There's Black Mirror through. in it. Oh, definitely. Yeah. To and bring it right up to date. Definitely. Inside number nine. I, I haven't seen, I haven't seen that one. No. Oh man. And that's a, that's a. British show it's on is uh, it like Black Mirror and I haven't yeah. I haven't heard of it now, where have I been <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah all right well let's talk about a, a few of the stories and, okay. and I've picked these up because they these are in the blurb that is on Amazon so okay. they must be ones you picked for a reason to put them in the blurb because you can't we can't talk about all 14 although they are all great there is not a dud story amongst them first of all okay. not like the others now this yeah. is one, this was the first one in the book and this caught me out because I'm reading the beginning of it and I'm thinking, oh yeah, I'm not sure what this is about. And then when I realize who you're talking about, and I don't want to give too much away, but one of the characters is a world famous international celebrity beloved <laughs> by children, yet we see a very dark side of his life where did that come from and i don't know if it's up to you how much you reveal about the, the subject matter because i don't want to give anything away i'm gonna if you want to give something away to tell to explain it well, well then go ahead i mean it, it's your it, it's your book but where did that come from uh where where did that come from <laughs> um so uh well i i might as well because because it's in the beginning so i'll i'll yeah. I'll, I'll explain sure. um so have, uh i don't know if you ever heard of the movie the santa claus but in that movie uh it explains like how someone becomes like the next santa claus like the, it's right. like a whole explanation of that um but there's no real explanation of like how more elves come about right uh so that was something i was thinking about yeah and also most not all but most depictions of elves are usually like males so yes. i was also thinking like oh well, we're we're all the females like what what's what's going on here uh and then there's also the case of like the mrs claus character yeah um and then there's also the like mythology behind uh like krampus so I just took those separate ideas and mixed them together and that that came out. But the thing is, like, I don't plan, like with none of my stories or my book as a whole, I don't plan any of these, these stories out. I just have like an initial idea and then I just start writing and I just see, see where it takes me. So. And that one took you to Santa Claus having, shall we say, an unusual diet? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. The the I think it's the next story, but it is the next one that's mentioned in the blurb, which is the story My Boy. Yes. Um which... My Boy is actually the first story that I wrote. So uh the order of the stories in the book, um yeah. I wrote them from, from beginning to end, but the orders that the stories are organized in the book, I shuffled those around um right. to try to like show their connections better and like have a better flow so yeah. my boy was actually the first story that i wrote right i see because that one that one really develops doesn't it and um we, we 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 find we have a character there that we think is 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 all good and, and nice and it turns out not so much <laughs> would that be fair <laughs> well i feel like you could say that about kind of all the characters i suppose <laughs> i suppose Cause could, yeah because the way i wanted to uh to like have that story is like 
is to see like two sides of like these characters i guess i mean they're both doing something bad but it's yeah. like two sides yeah. of like a situation yeah so my first and this isn't really a spoiler at all because like this was just the initial idea and then as i was writing the writing the story it like completely changed but my initial idea was um came from this video game that i played when i was younger it's called devil may cry and in that video game uh the main character dante is like half human half demon and my uh idea came from well what about when this guy was a kid like wouldn't the villagers from the town like want to like kill him or something yeah and what would human mother like do about that yeah so then that idea developed into well what if there was you know like a kid who was like uh like from the movie the omen who's the antichrist which yeah. you know people would want to get rid of him yeah well what if the people from like the town thought he was the antichrist and wanted to get rid of him and the parent of the kid wanted to save them but also thought they were the antichrist but then in reality the kid wasn't the antichrist it was just a normal kid and you know everyone was just completely mistaken about it but because everyone thinks this kid is that you know they're all making these actions upon that idea and yeah. that's how my yeah. boy came oh out. it is it is great I think one of my favorites because of the twist and the kind of uh, there's a loop you build into it is war story. Oh um, yeah. Because of, because of that loop, because it keeps. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think yes, that was yeah. very, very smart. How, how did oh, you, okay. how did you come up with that idea? Uh, I actually pretty much stole that from like uh, Chris, Christopher Nolan movies because uh especially like the journal part um i don't know if you've ever seen the movie the prestige but yeah but in... about magicians yes of, yeah i may have seen it but, i may have you know what i know it so, so i've either seen it or at least seen a preview of it or some a clip i don't know i couldn't tell you you got it it's it's about magicians but like in this the way the movie is structured like one character is reading a journal but then while that character is reading the journal inside the story of the journal another character starts reading a journal and then it like keeps going like that so i kind of like the idea so like i had the action in the beginning and then you know the character reads the journal and then you know things just kind of get out of hand yeah and there's a there's a huge misunderstanding which happens in a couple of the stories doesn't it a few of the characters misunderstand what's going on and take action yeah. based on their understanding, which turns out to be false. And then they realize what's yeah. going on. Yeah. And that's, well, that's kind of a running thing. I feel like that's, and you know, kind of, kind of life in a way, you know, yeah. people just base their actions off of their particular understanding. But I mean, from a different perspective, it could be a completely different situation. So, yeah. And, and many, and many years later in life, uh, you look back and you go, what was I thinking if only, and, and yeah, but yours kind of, it, it happens within the story before the story ends. It kind of, it, it, it all, it, it all comes to fruition. And, uh, and you're left there as a, for me, as a reader, for someone listening to the audio book version, uh, as a listener for, for them to suddenly go, oh yeah, uh, it keeps you on your toes. It does yeah. keep you on your toes. And, and why did you decide to make the stories? We, we talked about the word dark. Why did yeah. you decide to make them so dark? Uh, well, like I said, I, I just start with an idea and then I just start writing. So it wasn't necessarily- It's in you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it wasn't like a conscious thing. It was just like I was writing and then I reached points where, you know, I feel like, well, you know, if things go in a brighter direction, I feel like I'm not being honest. So I want to tell a more honest story. And I guess, I guess me being honest leads, leads to dark, dark conclusions. 
But uh, before I forget, I would like to say that uh, listening to you read them, it's basically like you rewrote my book in a good way because it it they're just like completely different stories. Just like listening to you to you read them, just like it, even the slightest ways that you say certain things, like the way I had it in my mind, or I even I read the thing out loud as I was going over it. The way you would read it would sometimes be different from that and I would think like man I didn't I wasn't thinking about it like that before but that that really works better so thank you <laughs> well thank you very I'm glad I didn't mess it up but um but you know the well, way I work I work I don't you know some audiobook producers will send you the whole audiobook and then you've got to pick through but I do it in I do it in um sections and send you the section and go look is this okay if there's any changes let me know and you and you can change them and you did change a few little things usually if it was a um a mispronunciation or something but I don't think we really changed that much of the the delivery I I came up with and the oh no because you, you deliver it so well I mean it was it was really fit. you you bring the characters to life really I have I had so much fun doing it because the characters you see usually if I do a novel I've got a set you know a set cast of characters but yours being 14 different short stories and some of the characters do repeat but there's a lot of characters in there so there was a lot for me to get I'd have to read a piece of it and then go well how's he going to sound is he going to sound angry? Is he going to sound desperate? Is there any background where I can find out where he's from? And mo most of them were were from the U.S., weren't they? There was there's there's one Cockney in it. But, yes. Uh, yeah, and I think that was in the audition. Was that why that I got chosen? Because I could do the Cockney. Yeah, you you were actually <laughs> the first person uh, who sent in an audition. Really? Uh, yeah, and uh, you were the best one. But uh, yeah. And uh, you, I mean, you, you hit the, the, that Cockney guy, you, you did him like better than anybody else, but yeah. Well, thanks for that. It was so much fun to do. The, um, the darker ones are always fun and yours was, uh, yours <laughs> was, <laughs> had, had some particularly dark moments. Well, thank you for saying that because I, I thoroughly enjoyed doing the book. Now, the people close to you, like, have you got a partner? uh no right i see so you, you you haven't had that kind of when you have a partner you you're constantly being critiqued <laughs> um, oh. so what about people close to you have they have they uh have they had anything to say about about how the either the the written book or the audio book has come out uh uh from what i've heard like responses to the audio book like everyone really loves the audio book Oh, good. Um, as uh, as far as like the content, uh, you know, a lot of people think it's pretty dark. So <laughs> they don't look at you differently at work now or anything. You know, it's like uh, I did actually have one person say that they would never be able to look at me the same again. <laughs> but uh, yeah. but we're, we're we're fine. We're fine. So yeah. Was, was any of it therapeutic for you? uh no really I, it, yeah it, it's not like i'm i'm writing like personal experiences like i told you no. like most of it is uh just taken from like movies and and shows and stuff like that so yeah yeah well that's nice okay so you've got the you've got the screenplay written you're working on the second book which is a novel and there's going to be recurring mm -hmm. themes all come back what else is going on for jordan dickerson uh I mean, other than the the writing, um, nothing really. Uh, yeah, I mean, I started my uh, I started. So when I wrote the book, I uh, I was planning on just self publishing it, but yeah. uh, as I was like looking through all that stuff, um, like I read that you know you should probably start a publishing company. If you're going to do that so i started a publishing company so you did? Uh, yes holy cow wow yeah i i actually named it uh red and waters so right yeah which yeah of course yeah yeah, yeah i thought that was uh appropriate yeah and uh and actually the the explanation i gave in the book about uh the name red and waters 
is not how I came up with the name Redmond Waters. Okay. Uh, yeah. The way I came up with it uh, was the Redmond part was from this, uh, this Stanley Kubrick movie called Barry Lyndon. Yes. And in Barry Lyndon, the main character, uh, Barry Lyndon, his real name is Redmond Barry. So I took that Redmond part. And then the Waters part, uh, there's this movie called In Bruges. Uh, that I really yeah, I've like. seen that one. I've seen yeah. that. It's a British movie, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. With an Irishman uh, in it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the main antagonist in that, his name is Harry Waters. So I just took, you know, Red and Waters and, and made that. But for the book, I didn't want to give that explanation. Uh, I wanted to, you know, something that sounded a bit cheesier. So that's why I came up with the, you know, whole like, Oh, Redmond Washington thing and yeah, yeah, all that. So yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's a it's a terrific read, and I can say that because I read it. And yeah. the good news <laughs> is I read it out loud. So if you would like to listen to the audio book, if you click, I'm going to put in the um, the blurb below. I'll put a link to Audible where you can get the book for free with a 30 day trial of Audible. So if you if you click on that, there's a 30 day trial of Audible you can sign up for and you can get the book for free. There's a link right there in the bottom of actually there'll be two. There'll be one with the UK Audible and one with the US Audible. The US Audible, I think, works everywhere in the world. The UK one only works in the UK, obviously. So check it out. Jordan Dickerson, pleasure to do the book. Great to finally meet you because this is the first time we've oh, even yeah. spoken together, isn't it? Everything was done oh, yeah. by message and text and and everything. But uh, yeah. And uh Thank you so much and thanks for choosing Thank me that's a, it's a big honor to know that that was your first book first audio book and and i was the narrator producer of that so brilliant well you you were too good i didn't have a choice i mean there was, <laughs> there was no one else who could you're too kind you're too kind i was working with great material that's the main thing yeah thank you thank you